Hey everybody, in this video we're going to check out my Commodore CMD HD20 hard drive. going to give you a general overview of the hard drive. I'm going to be doing some upgrades, some restoration, and future proofing of this hard drive, and then tell you what my future plans are with this drive and my childhood Commodore 64 computer. Sit back, relax, and let's jump right into it. The CMD HD20 is an external hard drive for the Commodore 64 and 128 computers developed by Creative Microdesigns, also known as CMD, and was produced from 1990 to around 2001. What's really cool with the CMD hard drives is they can emulate a 1541, a 1571, and a 1581 disk drive. Basically, you can create partitions on the hard drive for those specific drives. So if you want to put all your 1541 software, boom, you can do it. 1571, 1581, etc. Pretty cool. CMD hard drives were available with different storage capacities from 20 megabyte all the way up to two gigabyte. The first hard drives that CMD released were sold in 1990 and were 20 megabyte, like you see here, and they were around $600 US. Then they came out with a 40 megabyte which was around $800 US, and then later a 100 megabyte, which was around 1300 US. That is a lot of money back then and even now. From around the mid 1990s up until 2000, 2001, they also had the one gigabyte and a two gigabyte model. I have no information on what those were going for, but I can only guess around 13 to 1500. If you were around back in the day, and know any information about the pricing of the one gigabyte or two gigabyte CMD hard drives, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. Now we are up close with the front panel display of the HD20. The display you see here is the same and the buttons are the same on all CMD hard drives. The only difference would be right here where it says HD20, you'd see like an HD40, HD100, 200, etc. We got a power LED here two activity lights, an air light, a light for GEOS. Yes, these drives do support GEOS and Jiffy DOS. We got a swap eight, a swap nine button, and that is to switch between device number eight and nine. There is a write protect as well as a reset button. Let me turn the drive around and show you the connections on the back. Here is the back of the CMD hard drive. All CMD hard drives look exactly the same on the back with all the same ports. Normally there is a decal that goes all the way around here. My drive is missing it. I have added a on to the right, off to the left, just so I would remember which way it was on and off. Here there would be a screw underneath the decal. This was CMD's void warranty if removed kind of deal. It would be under the decal, so if you were to cut it or peel the decal off, CMD would know you were in the drive and it would void your warranty. In this video, I'm going to be adding a reproduction decal to the back of this once I'm done. And those decals are provided by Core i64. And I will have a link in my video description to where you can get the CMD decals as well as other uh, reproduction decals for Commodore Pets, etc. That's a really great site and company. So let me tell you about the ports on the back. We've got the SCSI port, the power on and off. We've got two serial ports, and those are so you can daisy chain in 1541s, 71s, 81s, etc. Here we've got an auxiliary port. Here we've got a parallel port, and this is using a special cable that you would connect to your RAM link, which would make this drive run really fast and send data back and forth to your Commodore 64 or 128 super duper fast. Here's where you plug in your power supply and now we're going to show you the bottom of the drive. Here is the bottom of the CMD hard drive. You can see we have four screws, which is securing the top to the bottom chassis, four rubber feet, and we've got the official label on the bottom. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. 
manufactured by Creative Microdesigns Inc. in Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Got the model number HD20, serial number HD020, which indicates that this is a HD20. The serial number is actually 00205. My understanding is this would have been the 205th drive to come off the production line. Then we've got the FCC ID, which is IH3201400. Now let's crack this open and see what's on the inside. We are in handheld mode. I've got the top off and we're going to show you the inside of the CMD hard drive. Right here we've got the SCSI cable. The original hard drive has been removed. It would have been mounted in between here with the SCSI cable plugged in and of course the power cable. Right here is the original HD ROM boot BIOS. We're going to be changing that with an updated one to support larger hard drives. And what else can we show you? Oh yeah, the CMD hard drive, they do have a real-time clock. They are battery backed by this battery here. Doesn't appear any leakage. At a later date, I will replace that, but it looks to be in good condition. So we're gonna go ahead and keep that. Next up, we're going to pull out this ROM here and put in my new updated ROM from Jim Brain. Stand by. There is the original chip pulled out and safely in some anti-static foam. There is the new V2.80 ROM that allows for larger hard drives, thanks to Jim Brain. I will put a link in the video description to where you can get this ROM and upgrade your CMD hard drive and other cool stuff that he sells on his website. Next, we're gonna upgrade the hard drive solution. Since I no longer have the original spinning rust SCSI drive, I'm gonna be putting in a modern solution. And in this case, I'm gonna be using the Zulu SCSI. This is version 1.1. I will put a link in the description to where you can get one of these, but it's by Rabbit Hole Computing. It's a SD card, so it's SCSI to SD. And it also has the DB port on there as well if you wanted to use this external, but I'm gonna be mounting it right in there. And I've got it on this nifty 3D printed bracket. So in a moment with the magic of editing, you will see this in the hard drive. I've now got the Zulu SCSI installed. It's in there nice and secure. Got the SCSI cable, power. Used one of the original spacers right here to get everything to fit nice. Cables are looking good. I can see the battery if I ever, you know, keep an eye on it if there's any leakage or whatever. But surprisingly, that battery actually still holds a charge right now. So we're gonna leave it. Next up, I'm going to remove this and then I'm going to install this on the back. Okay, the pressure is on. I'm only gonna get one shot at this. Here is the decal. I'm going to take it off of the paper. Here it is. Oh man, will I get it on here? Just right. Oh, it was close. Oh man, pressure. Oh, look at that. Happy days. That looks pretty darn good. Look at that. That is proper. Cool. At this point, I've got the ROM upgraded so I can run up to a four gigabyte SD card hard drive. I've got the Zulu SCSI installed. I have got the replacement decal on the back. All that is left to do now is prep the SD card and get it ready for my Commodore 64 project. And what is that project you might be asking? Well, from 1984 until 
mid-1990, I ran a bulletin board, a BBS, on my Commodore 64 computer. Originally, I used 1541 disk drives. I later got a 1581, and in 1990, I uh, got a CMD HD20 like you see here, and had my BBS on that. Well, now, years later, what, 35 years later, I found my BBS files backed up on a 1581 floppy disk. I'm going to get those set up on this CMD hard drive. I'm going to figure out how to uh, use the BBS again because it's been forever. And now, instead of dialing in with a phone, you can tell that into BBSs. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have to do a little more research, but the plan is to put my original bulletin board up running on this HD20 as well as my childhood Commodore 64. With that, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. You see them right here on the paper in front of you. These are the folks that support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills. If you like the video, thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, comments are always welcome. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video.